hi everyone welcome or welcome back we're going to be making over this buffet today it's in really great shape other than the burn on the top and i will be changing out the door hardware i don't really like it in the middle so i'm going to be putting one on the side leave me a comment if you think you know what hardware i'm going to choose you'll find it at the end of the video just by looking at the drawers i can tell this is a mahogany veneer and just like with most of my pieces, we start with removing the hardware. I've got this handy electric screwdriver that I got for my birthday, which is coming up on April the 8th. It was an early birthday gift and I'm really getting great use out of it. To avoid my cleaning rags from getting extra dirty, I'm just vacuuming out any loose dirt and debris in the drawers and in the buffet. And I'm just using some all-purpose simple green to clean the piece. Make sure you do a thorough job. You really want your piece to be clean before you start sanding and painting. I just wanted to take a moment and thank all of my subscribers. Since I started this channel, you guys are amazing. I really love reading all your comments, so please keep them coming. Now that everything's cleaned, I'm just letting them dry before I start my sanding. I left all my hardware in a container filled with vinegar and I left it for a couple nights and it's coming off really easily but I am going to be using some Barkeeper's Friend just to clean them up a little bit more. I will be spray painting these so I'm not trying to get them perfect but with everything you want to make sure it's clean before you paint. And now that everything's dry I'm just measuring the length of where the other hardware holes were to where I want to put mine and then right in the middle of where that trim is and the end of the door. And I did this exact same thing to the other door as well. Now that our holes are drilled, we're just taking some quick wood. You just have to mix this stuff together really well and then stick it into the holes. This stuff really is the best for hardware holes. It worked in one go with a 120 grit sandpaper. I didn't have to fill over it again. It dried so hard and it was super smooth. Look, I finally remembered to grab my carbine scraper before my sander. This just saves so much time. You don't have to waste nearly as much sandpaper discs when you do the carbine scraper. It just knocks off so much of that thick coating on the top. Did you notice I had to go grab gloves? I'm freezing my butt out here in the garage. I also tried to use my carbide scraper around the edges as much as I could because I will have to hand sand this and that's a lot of work to hand sand. So I'm just trying to get off as much as I can with my carbide scraper. I then started sanding with a 120 grit just to get off any more of that finish that was left and eventually moved to a 220 to scuff sand the entire piece and smooth out the top. Any flat surface that I could scuff sand with the orbital sander I did and then any of the little details I hand sanded. Scuff sanding a piece is super important. It really makes your paint adhere better and also will leave you with a lasting finish.
After everything was vacuumed off, I then just took a damp rag and wiped down any of the remaining dust. If you're enjoying this video so far, please leave me a like, a comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think of the final piece, and I will leave all the products listed in the description below. After cleaning the hardware, there was still a little bit of loose bits on the pieces, so I'm just sanding it down. This will also make the spray paint adhere better. And then I did three light coats of this all-in-one paint and primer. Again, the links will be in the description if you're wondering what products I used. We are finally ready to prime. I am using Zinzer's Bin Shellac Base Primer. This is really great for bleed throughs and with mahogany we are definitely going to get some bleed through if I sand it down too much with the scuff sanding. And as always, I'm just using a four inch microfiber roller. I reuse this roller many times. I just keep it in the fridge between projects and it still works great. If you're worried your doors might stick, you can label your hinges. Even when I do that, I still have trouble. So you don't wanna paint the bottom of your doors or drawers if they're really tight. And you can also just extra sand around the edges. That way, when you're adding like five coats of something, you know, your paint, your primer, your top coat, it really adds up. So if you give it an extra good sand, you're less likely to have your door stick when you put them back on. I should have paid better attention when I was putting my tape on because I did have to make some touch-ups. I had put a drawer in and notice you could see the inside of the buffet. So not a big deal, I just touched it up, but it would have saved me a step had I paid better attention before putting my tape on. So I've used chip brushes before for this primer where I can just toss it, but I really don't like doing that because I find chip brushes leave little hairs everywhere. So it's just so much easier to put a little bit extra paint or primer on the tip of the microfiber roller and get into the corners, the cracks, the crevices that way. I've had this primer for a little while now and the lid does not go on very great. So as I was trying to close it, it decided it wanted to put primer all over my face and mask. You can just take some rubbing alcohol on a pad and wipe it all off. Now that everything's dry, I'm just taking a fine grit sanding sponge to knock down any texture that the primer might have left. Don't forget to get rid of all that dust with a damp rag. I know it's hard to see, my lighting is awful in the garage, but there was some bleed through where I had sanded through where I had patched up those holes. So I'm just adding a second coat of primer. And now that everything's dry, I am going to struggle getting this buffet in my house because my husband's not home. So I don't like to wait. I want it in the house and ready to paint. If it was warmer in my garage, I could definitely do it out there. But with the temperatures fluctuating, from day to night, it's better to have it in your house at a consistent temperature for your paint to properly cure. A little trick to get rid of those hairs on your rollers is to just take some duct tape and roll off any little hairs that might be on there. And there was quite a bit. Now that we're finally ready to paint, I am using House and Canvas in the color River Rock. It is a beautiful gray color. I always start with my door since it takes twice as long. I have to wait for the paint to dry before I flip it and do the other side.
If you didn't know this, you can reuse your rollers. I do, I give them a good washout, and I usually use like colors. So with this one that I used for gray, I might use black next time or any dark colors. And then if I use white, I'll keep it to any light colors with that. But they wash out really well, and using that little tape trick ends up making them fluffier and just like new. I definitely got my steps in while doing this. I had to go from one end of the table to the other end to the other end. I was just too short to be able to reach over since my table's tall. It just was a lot easier to go from the other side to the other side. I let my paint dry overnight before taking this super fine pad to knock down any texture and little hairs that might be in my finish. Although this isn't kicking up a lot of dust, you still want to wipe it back after you're done. And now I'm just showing you where I touched up, so that way when the drawers are closed, it's just completely one color. To remove any of the primer that bled through my tape, I'm just taking a razor blade just to get that off because it will not stain well. I always like to use a pre-stained conditioner. It's one extra step, but you know what, if it can save you from having to re-sand an entire top again, I definitely think it's worth it. I follow the instructions on the can and I let it sit on there for 15 minutes before I apply my stain. This is my first time using Kona. It's a really dark color. I've seen a lot of other YouTubers use it and I just love the way that it looks and it turned out absolutely beautiful. I'm also using a staining pad for the first time. I wanted something that I could reuse and I, it worked okay. I think it soaked up a lot of the stain since it was my first time using it, but I'll give it another try and I keep it in the freezer so that way it's not going to spontaneously combust on me. Now I'm ready to top coat now that the paint has fully dried overnight. Typically you want to wait 24 hours, that's what it says on the can. And I'm just using a clear coat for the top. Again we're going in the direction of the wood grain to minimize streaking. To get a super smooth finish you want to take that same fine grit sanding pad and sand in between coats. Another way to minimize streaking is to mix a little bit of your paint in with the top coat before you apply it. You'll see me run my finger around the edges with paint and top coat. I prefer not to have to sand it afterwards, so just wiping off any excess with my finger saves an extra step. Once the entire piece is top coated and dried, I'm just adding on these furniture pads. I got them from Amazon. I'll link them in the description for you. And our final step is to add some Dixie Belle Big Mama's Butter. Does anyone else feel like they have an accent when they say that? Is it just me? Okay, just me. I put this Big Mama's Butter all over the bottom of the drawers, on the inside of the drawers. I put it everywhere. It just makes the piece smell so great. And I wipe off any excess once I let it sit for a little bit. Then I put the hardware on and we are ready to get everything all together. Did you guess what hardware I used for the doors? Let's take another look at the before before you find out. And now here's the after. <laughs> 